Hey, girlfriends, how are you? Jordan exclaimed as she approached her two 20-something friends sitting at a dark wooden table at Dingo's Sports Bar. Jordan and her three friends, work colleagues, Shelly, Pam, and Emily, met almost every Friday after work to swap gossip, eat to their heart's content, and see how many free drinks they could get from all the grateful men who frequented this usually male-dominated place of shelter. Young, beautiful, well-proportioned girls were in short supply at Dingo's, so the bartender was careful to ensure that snacks were always available, but only took one or two orders from the girls. He knew that he would more than compensate for the losses due to the drinks that the men at the bar constantly brought to the girls' table. The girls asked for the drinks to be weak so they could drink more and still maintain some semblance of self-control. Since he was interested in their return visit, he always complied with their requests. Customers should be happy, especially if it is in the interests of the bar. Girls were harassed quite regularly, but in general, that was the idea. If a guy showed his appreciation with free drinks and could carry on a lively, interesting conversation, he might just might be rewarded with one, or more, of the girls inviting him into their bed for a night of fun and pleasure. The bartender Phil readily pointed out this fact to any interested man. But tonight, the girls had other thoughts. Have you heard of Vicky Summers? Pam asked her friends as she began the evening's gossip segment. I heard from John from accounting that she was served with divorce papers in the office today. Not a big deal, right? Shelley said her big brown eyes wide with surprise. Oh God, this sucks. Not only was she served with divorce papers, but they did it in front of everyone at work. Damn, how rude. Yes, but speaking of divorce, they say that her husband, Mike, caught her having sex with Jake Preston in their house, in their bed. Mmm, I actually heard a rumor that Vicky and Jake did this quite regularly. No one witnessed it. But the rumors were pretty persistent, Pam mused, shaking her head. What, slut? Does Vicky see in Jake? As far as I can tell, he's an arrogant, lying asshole. Yeah, he's a real asshole, but she didn't want what was in his head but what was in his pants. Jordan giggled. Did either of you have sex with Jake? Pam shook her head gloomily while Shelley remained completely still and didn't say anything, but her silence spoke for itself. Jordan grinned knowingly at Shelley and turned to Pam. Rumor has it that old Jake has a pretty impressive male instrument and isn't shy about sharing it. Not that we know. Really, Shelley? Jordan teased. Shelley stuck her tongue out at Jordan and smiled a sly smile. Pam chimed in. Listen, casual sex is one thing if you are not married but looking for weirdness when you're married is a completely different matter. Especially if your husband looks anything like Mike Summers. What a catch. I worked with him for a while and he's a really great, sweet guy. He's funny, smart, a real good-looking guy, and does a great job. What more could a girl want? I would let him have sex with me in the middle of Main Street during rush hour if I thought it would make him interested in me. In my opinion, he is a real stud. Pam continued, now on a roll. What the hell was Vicky thinking? The stupid bitch deserves to lose it. What a thick-headed bitch. Pam spat forcefully, almost exhaling the air. Jordan quipped, yes, that's a fact. The stupid bitch wasted her life for a short romp in bed with a brainless loser. As soon as she received the papers, she began to cry hysterically and asked to leave, saying that she needed to see her parents. She ran away like a child to her mom and dad, a spoiled brat, just like she is. Jordan sighed and looked dreamily into the distance. Mmm, Mike is just handsome. I would marry him in an instant. Shelley suddenly gasped. Do you understand what this means, girls? Mike Summers will be back on the market soon, so to speak. Vicky's loss could be my, uh, our gain. Pam and Jordan smiled slightly mischievous smiles and said almost simultaneously, Ooh, yeah! Let the games begin! Everyone raised their glasses in greeting. Everyone laughed a little at the scene as the bartender served three new drinks, announcing that they were brought by a big guy in a blue suit standing at the bar. 
The girls raised their glasses in gratitude to their new benefactor and giggled. Did the guy really think he could handle all three of them? They returned to their conversation. Soon Pam, looking a little thoughtful, asked, Does Emily know about Vicky and the divorce? You know how close she is with Vicky, like sisters. Where is she anyway? Isn't she coming tonight? Jordan nodded slightly. As far as I know, she's coming, but she's been stuck at board meetings for three days now, taking dictation, and then she has to transcribe the notes to prepare some documents. She'll probably be gone for another half hour. She has a good job, but when she has to take transcripts of board meetings, she has to give it her all. I think every bright side has its shadow. Girlfriends, we need to be careful what we talk about Vicky in front of Emily. Vicky may be a sucking scum or a cheating whore, but she's actually a good person. Shelley grumbled, grinning widely. Everyone laughed at Shelley's joke, but Shelley intervened. No, seriously, friends, we don't want to offend Emily by making fun of her friend. Everyone nodded in agreement. Jordan said quietly, I think we should tell her what we know, if she hasn't already heard. Since she was busy the last three days, she probably didn't talk to Vicky. I once worked with her in board meetings and I thought it would kill me. It's damn grueling work. Tss, attention. Emily just came in. Rest easy, ladies. Emily saw her friends and waved in greeting, confidently walking towards their booth with a friendly smile. Feeling that all eyes in this room were fixed on her, she straightened up to her full height and slightly stuck out her impressive chest. Her red hair flowed slightly behind her back, which only enhanced the effect. Emily looked a little tired, but her easy walk did a miracle. It revived her and brightened up the atmosphere of the bar as she approached the booth. Hello, Emily. Looking great, girl. Damn, you really know how to appear in public? Pam said admiringly. Hello, girlfriends. Sorry I'm so late. Have you been waiting long? Emily said in her soft southern voice. Shelley replied with a warm smile. We didn't wait, girl. We started without you. Okay. So I need to catch up. And I need a little liquid comfort after the week I've had. Emily sighed loudly and visibly relaxed as she took her seat in the booth. The friends exchanged a few words about how each of them was doing and continued to have pleasant banter for a while, chatting about trifles until at least three servings of drinks and new snacks were brought to the table. The bartender lingered around for a while, ostensibly to make sure everyone was okay and taken care of, but it was quite obvious that he was really there to be as close as possible to the stunning vision that had just entered. Emily was wonderful. Long, light red hair framed her face in soft curls. Her bright green eyes captivated you if you looked into them. Her body was tight, with chiseled curves and long, muscular legs. She was the epitome of femininity and, to top it all off, a sweet, caring person. Her soft voice with a gentle southern accent could melt the phone in your hand if she was on the other end of the line. Emily was special, and everyone knew it except her. The bartender responded to her call like a puppy, and she tied him even more to her, touching his hand and saying, Thank you, Phil. You are always so kind to us. You're just a sweetheart. Phil beamed and said, If you ladies need anything, let me know. He walked back to the counter with a spring in his step. Damn it, girl, how do you do it? You could ask him for a car and he would give you the keys and license without even asking why. You should teach lessons, Pam admired. I like to watch men melt at your feet. Oh, stop it, Pammy. I just like to show people that I appreciate what they do for me, that's all, Emily said playfully. Do you think I should ask him what kind of car he drives? Emily said, her eyes sparkling. Everyone chuckled a little at this and continued their conversation. Jordan was the first to finally bring up the subject of Vicky and Mike. Have you talked to Vicky lately? Emily looked at her friends questioningly as they waited for her answer. Since Monday, no. I was too busy to talk to anyone, Emily answered carefully. What? What's happening? What's happened? Emily asked nervously, noticing how everyone was looking at her. Jordan paused and then got to the point. Today in the office, Vicky received divorce papers. Oh God, no, Emily gasped. She must be devastated. Mike must have found out about her, her 
indiscretion. How will she survive this? Oh my God, what is she going to do? Emily shook her head, muttered something quietly, and tried to comprehend the enormity of this news and its impact on her friend. She sat silently for some time, lost in thought, and continued to shake her head sadly. The others watched her carefully for a while and then, deciding to give Emily time to think, the three of them began a quiet conversation. Suddenly, Emily took out her cell phone and pressed a few keys. Hello? Yes, it's me. I just found out what happened. Are you okay, honey? No, of course not. I'm really sorry. What can I do? Do you want me to come? No. You can't be alone now. It's too serious, too painful. Oh, honey. Go ahead, cry. I'll come. I can be there in 15, maybe 20 minutes. No, that's what friends are for. I will come, and I will not accept refusal. Oh, you poor thing. I'm already leaving. Hold on, honey, I'm on my way. Bye. Emily closed the phone and sighed heavily. She immediately began packing her things. I'm really sorry, girls, but I have to go. I have a friend who really needs a shoulder. How much do I owe? Emily huffed, taking out her wallet. Don't be stupid, Emily. We'll figure it out. You still haven't eaten anything. Just go and take care of Vicky. Give her our love and ask if there is anything we can do to help. Shelley waved her arms, shooing her away, and stood up to hug Emily. Vicky is very lucky to have a friend like you. You're just a doll, baby. Now get out of here and do what you can. Emily hugged her friends and ran out of the bar, kissing Phil and waving. Everyone present looked after her. The three girls got comfortable and began to discuss general topics, but the conversation tended to return to Mike and Vicky. Half an hour passed unnoticed, under the influence of even more booze. The girls have already begun to feel the consequences. The conversation ebbed and flowed but kept coming back to Vicky and Mike, mainly about how unworthy Vicky was of Mike and how they will all go after Mike once Vicky is history. Pam suddenly straightened up. Did you say something about Vicky going to her parents today? Yes, I heard her say that she was going to her parents when she left the office. She was very upset, Jordan said, wondering what Pam was thinking. I know that Vicky's parents live in Tampa, Florida, which is five or six hours away. If Vicky went to her parents, Emily couldn't go to hers, Pam thought. There was silence in the group for a while as their alcohol-soaked brains made sense of and processed the new information. Shit! She's not going to help Vicky! She's going to meet Mike! Shelley suddenly said. Shit! spat the other two. Phil, please give us the check! We need to go! Somewhere on the border of sleep, music was playing. Emily finally found the source of the sound. The intruder device turned out to be her cell phone and she was having a hard time understanding why it was playing music in the middle of the night. This stupid phone was calling. Two inscriptions appeared on the screen. The time was 3.17 a.m. and caller ID. Vicky Summers is calling. Hello? Emily answered hoarsely, barely waking up. Don't say hello to me, you treacherous slut. Not even a day has passed, and you are already trying to seduce my husband. I thought you were my friend, you sneaky bitch. If you touch my husband, I swear I will shoot you dead, you, you vicious, trashy slut. Vicky spewed fire and venom in her signature West Texas twang. Emily immediately became wary and decided to ignore Vicky's tirade. Well, hi, Vicky. It's very nice of you to call, but I have to say that now is a very bad time for me. In case you haven't noticed, it's already three in the morning, and I've had a very stressful and tiring week, so I'd like to get some sleep. However, you seem to be very upset with me, and I have no idea why. So if you can calm down, I'd love to hear what you're upset about. If not, I'll have to ask you to call me at a less inopportune time. Vicky began to breathe heavily. You know exactly why I'm angry with you. Shelley just called and said some girls told you that Mike served me with divorce papers yesterday, and you almost broke the sound barrier to meet him. How could you do this? Have you already had sex with him, you shameless, treacherous slut? Is he with you now? He is my husband. Can you hear me, Emily? My husband. You can't have it. He is mine. 
Emily took a deep breath to calm herself and spoke in a very slow, soft voice. Yes, Vicky, I did go to Mike, but I swear on everything that is sacred to me that I did not seduce him and did not sleep with him. You went to your parents, and Mike was left alone after he found out that you betrayed him. He, like you, is my friend, and I value my friendship very much. I was very afraid that he would do something stupid, so I came to him as a friend, let him cry on my shoulder and listen to him when he cried out his pain. You hurt him very much, Vicky, with your actions. He may be your husband, but how could you do this to anyone, especially the person you say you love? How could you do this? Vicky, you said Shelly called you. I had no idea you and Shelly were close. You don't think she called you in the middle of the night because of some ulterior motive, do you? Vicky was silent for a while. I really don't know Shelly that well. What do you mean? What ulterior motive might Shelly have? Vicky, honey, you should know that Mike is considered a pretty spectacular match. I know for sure that many single women are already lining up to take advantage of your, your situation. While I was at your house, Mike received calls from four women who wanted to know how he was doing and how soon he planned to start dating again. One of them was a woman he didn't even know. Shelly was there at Dingo's when I heard you got served. Maybe she thought she could drive a wedge between us and distract us enough with an argument that she could go after Mike herself. I don't know for sure, but maybe that's the point. Damn, Emily, suddenly I can't trust anyone. Vicky shook her head sadly. Mmm, Vicky, perhaps you should watch how you pronounce that word trust. Right now, your husband is suffering from serious trust issues. Recently, he discovered that he could not trust his own wife. For the record, Vicky, I promise you that I will not pursue Mike while you two are married. I will comfort you and him, be a friend if anything is needed, and hope with all my heart that you can mend your relationship with him and move forward together. But Vicky, you should know, and I will be as honest as I can. If Mike becomes a single man again, I will use all my tricks and every ounce of energy to get him to pay attention to me, just so you know. Well, thank you for your honesty. Vicky sighed dejectedly. Why did he need to file for divorce? I just don't understand what the problem is. Well, did I have sex with Jake? Just think. It was just a game. A little fun. Sex. And what? Emily sucked in a breath of disbelief. Vicky, are you out of your mind? You can't be that stupid. So what? Oh my God, girl. You brought a stranger into your home. To the house you share with your husband to your bed, to the bed you share with your husband, and she invited him into her body, your body, which you allegedly promised to use exclusively for making love with your husband. You did it behind your husband's back while he was out of town. Obviously, you didn't think Mike was okay with it, otherwise you wouldn't have been sneaking around. Just playing? What needs to be done for you to see this as a serious problem? Maybe if you had Jake's baby... Or maybe if you tied Mike up and forced him to watch. Shit, Vicky. Be honest. At least be honest with yourself. And with me. And further. If you really think this is nothing special, then explain to me the purpose of this telephone conversation. Can you do this, please? You called me in the middle of the night to yell at me and threaten me because you thought I slept with your husband. Explain this shit to me. According to you, sex on the side should not be something special. You don't even believe the nonsense you're spouting. See? Now you've made me forget all my manners. You disgust me so much, Vicky, that I'm ready to spit. Poor Vicky. Her husband divorces her because she acted like a brainless slut. Damn you, Vicky. You deserve to lose him. Damn it! How can I sleep after you made me so angry? You cheated on your husband, Vicky, multiple times from what I hear and you dare be willing to commit murder because he possibly slept with someone else. Explain this logic to me, okay? You can't, because she's not there. Damn you, girl, you're just pissing me off. You better watch who you're threatening, Missy. If you come at me with a gun, I swear it will take a team of surgeons to remove that gun from your ass. I'm swearing like a drunken sailor here, but I should be a southern lady. My grandmothers are spinning in their graves. I swear I'm just furious. Emily seethed with anger, finishing her little speech. Vicky now began to cry and lament. I know, I know. You're absolutely right. I'm a damn idiot. 
I just didn't want to admit it. Oh my God, I lost him, M. He was the best, and I lost him. How can I look someone in the eye? How could I be so stupid? I don't even know how he found out, but he told my dad that he had the pictures and everything. Now he will never take me back. Everything is over. Oh, Vicky. I'm really sorry, Emily said sincerely, but she also shook her head at the disaster her friend had brought upon herself. Emily decided it was time to continue the conversation. So you're saying your dad talked to Mike? Yes. When I came to my parents and let them look at the divorce papers, my dad called Mike and started screaming at him to explain himself. Dad was very angry until Mike told him that he had video and concrete evidence that I was cheating on him. Dad fell silent, apologized for both of us, and hung up. He looked at me as if I were some kind of two-headed space creature, and since then he hasn't spoken to me again. I still don't know how Mike got the video of us. Mmm, I think I can answer your question. Mike told me that you were communicating with him on the internet, and you seemed distracted. He said that you were wearing a robe, which you usually only wear to cover up your special underwear for the full visual effect later. After you left the network, he became worried and became suspicious, so he logged into your laptop and began controlling it remotely. With the laptop lid flipped open, he was able to access the external webcam he bought specifically for the purpose of talking to you. He restarted the video chat program and controlled everything remotely from his hotel room. The laptop was on the dressing table in your bedroom, so he could see and hear everything. He set his computer to record the entire session. Oh, crap! I didn't know he could do this. Oh, come on, Vicky. Your husband is an equipment manager at a large law firm. It monitors every piece of equipment that has a power cord or battery in their office building. He's like a computer genius. Of course he can do it. He also said something about a policeman appearing at the door. What was it? Oh, a policeman came and said he had a report from a neighbor that someone was sneaking around the neighborhood. He asked if he could come in and look around. I let him in, he looked around, and I introduced Jake to him. I told the officer that Jake was an invited guest. Uh-uh. Did their acquaintance take place in your bedroom? Yes. Why? Well, that means Mike has confirmation from the police officer and his shift report of the time and date, and the officer will actually appear on the videotape if Mike needs it for proof. This won't mean anything in divorce court, but it might be important if you guys have a prenuptial agreement or something like that. Oh, crap! Emily! I'm completely screwed! Vicky screamed. Mike works at a damn law firm. Of course we have a damn prenuptial agreement. Crap! In case of proven infidelity, I will receive nothing at this stage of our marriage. Crap! My father will be for use. He was determinate that Miki would lose everything if he insisted on a divorce, and then he would be more willing to stop the process and forgive me. I'm even willing to bet that it was Mike who called one of the neighbors to call the police. Oh my God, M, I definitely lost it. There was a long pause as Vicky considered her situation. Um, I have to go. I don't think I can talk anymore. Look, I'm sorry I yell it at you, and thank you for being my friend and listening and everything when I needed it. Now I know what I have to face. Thank you, Emily. Good night. Good night, Vicky. Take care, honey, and I hope everything goes well for you. Call me if you need me. Bye. After the call hung up, Emily looked at the phone in her hand, shook her head, and rolled her eyes. Stupid, stupid, spoiled bitch. She then lay down on the bed and tried to control the adrenaline rush and fall asleep. Sleep did not come because thoughts of Mike kept popping up in her mind. Emily Summers. Mike and Emily Summers. Mmm, that sounds so good. Mike, baby, once I hold you, you won't stand a chance. If only I can stop myself from pouncing on you before your divorce is final. After all, a girl must have her principles. Hang in there, Emily. Patience is a virtue. Finally, she fell into a comfortable, deep sleep. Once the videotape was presented and confirmed, there was no point in fighting the divorce, and Vicky and her parents insisted on a calm and quick conclusion to the process. Vicky moved to Tampa and went to work for her father.
Her father's family ranch in West Texas was leased for grazing and was home to several active oil and gas wells. Vicky traveled to her childhood home many times, making sure the property was maintained and the oil production continued. She also began to use her single status to embrace some of the ranch and oil well workers. Emily maintained a close relationship with Mike, helping him move on after Vicky. They were talking. They laughed. They were arguing. They shared their souls and learned each other's loves and fears. Mike always admired and loved Emily's personality, her fierce loyalty to her friends, and her outspoken, fiery personality. She was principled, compassionate, and passionate, a powerful combination. Emily insisted that there would be no physical union while Mike was still married and for a decent four-month period after the divorce became final. Three weeks after Mike and Vicky's marriage was over, Emily was awakened by frantic knocking on the door. It was just after three in the morning when she opened the door and saw Mike in a raincoat and cartoon pajamas. She was stunned and barely had time to say, Mike, what's wrong with you? As Mike took her into his tight embrace and his tongue began to taste her tonsils, she tried to take off his coat without letting go and whispered hoarsely, I can't wait any longer either. They made love the first time on the living room floor and twice more before sunrise in Emily's bed. From that morning, they became an inseparable couple, Mike and Emily Summers. There really is something pleasant and solid in this word. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.